Hey guys, welcome back to YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. I'll be more than glad to react to whatever you suggest. Check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content that we put out. Today, I'm going to be reacting to the greatest greatest evidence of the truth of islam and prophet muhammad so without wasting time let's get into the video the quran mentions a prophecy right at the beginning of the prophetic mission which seemed very improbable out of the question very unlikely and yet at the end of the relatively brief period of 22 23 years that prophecy was fully and completely fulfilled when the messenger of God and the message of God dominated the entire Arabian Peninsula and all opposition was eliminated. How did it happen? The Quran tells us that the rule is that if a messenger is forced to leave the population where he originally delivers God's message, that population, that town is bound to be punished, bound to be destroyed. The people who rejected the messenger. That evidence is a prophecy that was made by the Quran. In other words, made by the Prophet that a certain transformation in the Arabian Peninsula is going to be witnessed very soon. The incident, the transformation that was prophesied was improbable when the claim was first made. The Prophet, right at the beginning of his prophetic mission, stated, well, the Quran stated, he just reproduced what the Quran said, that these people who were opposing him, the leaders of the Quraysh clan, they are going to perish. And the Prophet, who at the time when this prophecy was being made, was almost alone by himself, supported by only a few people. The prophecy claimed that on the one hand, these strong chiefs of Quraysh are going to be destroyed. And on the other hand, the message of the Almighty, which the messenger is putting across, is going to dominate. The messenger and the message would dominate the Arabian Peninsula. This claim was made, as I said, in the very early part of the prophetic mission. It's uh, mentioned in chapter 73, verses 15 and 16. The Almighty says, O people, O people of Quraysh, we have sent to you a messenger, like we sent a messenger to Pharaoh. He disobeyed him. That is, Pharaoh disobeyed that messenger, that is Moses. So we seized him with a grievous penalty, a grievous punishment. The understanding was clear that like Moses, in the case of Muhammad as well, it's going to happen that uh, the opponents, the adversaries are going to be destroyed. God's punishment is going to visit them and the prophet is going to dominate like Moses did. This prophecy was not just made in one passage of the Quran. The fact of the matter is that if one reads the Quran carefully, one would find that this prophecy was made over and over again. There are a number of chapters, surahs of the Quran, wherein we find this prophecy. 
in most cases this future event that was to take place was described in a manner that stories of six important messengers were narrated one after the other each story mentioning the fact that messengers came to their respective nations they delivered god's message their nation or a part of them rejected the message and ultimately god's punishment through one natural calamity or another visited these nations to destroy them the names of noah hud saleh lot shoaib and moses may god be pleased with all of them have been mentioned over and over again in stories that have been described in different ways but the end result the outcome is the same that these messengers they came and when their nations respective nations opposed them ultimately they were destroyed the prophet migrated to medina from mecca after spending 13 years as god's messenger but like in the case of all earlier prophets of god he too was opposed by his nation so much so that he had to leave the city of his birth and migrate to medina now the quran mentions the principle that it has always been god's policy that when he sends his messengers they and their followers ultimately prevail and their adversaries their enemies they are destroyed this principle is mentioned in surah al mujadila 58th chapter of the quran verses 20 and 21 katab allah god has written it down he has made a firm declaration la aglibanna i am going to prevail ana wa rusuli i and my messengers so quran is unmistakable as far as mention of god's policy is concerned and as a consequence the mention of the prophecy is concerned how did it happen the quran tells us that the rule is that if a messenger is forced to leave the population where he originally delivers god's message that population that town is bound to be punished bound to be destroyed the people who rejected the messenger so after spending 13 years in mecca and delivering god's message when he migrated to medina the quran mentions clearly reminds that that migration is going to herald the beginning of uh, the punishment of the enemies so it so happened that 2 years later a battle was fought the battle of badr wherein all important notable chiefs of quraish who opposed the prophet and forced him to leave the city they were all killed in the battle it doesn't happen uh, normally in the battles and wars fought between different armies nations that the generals get eliminated all of them but it's a unique battle in the history of battles wherein we find all chiefs of uh, the tribe of quraish except one abu sufyan who was not a part of the army and was to be saved from getting killed the rest of them all were destroyed thereafter the message continued to be delivered after this very clear sign that was put across to the people of uh, this arabian peninsula uh, if you are going to oppose our messenger and not believe in the message that he has brought your fate 
is going to be the same as was met by the chiefs of Quraysh. From the year 2 after Hijra, after migration, till year 9, um, there were 7 years when people were given opportunity to convert to Islam. Why convert to Islam? Because the message of Islam was delivered by the messenger so clearly and convincingly that there remained no doubt in the minds of those who were open-minded, honest people that the message was from God. And those who didn't accept it and denied and rejected it were the ones who did not want to believe. And they did not want to believe because their character, their morals were not up to the mark. In other words, they were morally corrupt people. So it has always been God's policy when he sends his messengers and the nation rejects the message that the messengers put across to their nations, they are destroyed because they prove through their conduct that they don't deserve to live anymore. This life is a life of trial. Everybody is free to choose whatever he or she wants to choose. God doesn't force people to believe in his religion in this worldly life normally. However, this facility is available to all human beings because the truth of God's message is not quite as clear as it becomes to those people who are visited by God's messengers directly. Once the message of God is absolutely clear and there is no doubt in the minds of those who are its addressees and they still reject and deny it, they are not allowed to live in this world any further beyond a certain deadline. That deadline uh, was reached in the year, ninth year after Hijrah. In the intervening seven years, only the blatant rejectors of the message were killed. In the ninth century Hijra, it was declared in the Quran that after the lapse of the sacred months, uh, all people who were polytheists belonging to the nation of the messenger and who have not accepted the faith of Islam are going to be killed. Like God has been destroying and punishing earlier nations through one natural calamity or another, in this particular case, it were the swords of the companions of the messenger that were employed by the Almighty to destroy those who rejected the truth. Um, this is a lot, the greatest evidence of the truth of Islam. I mean, to someone who believes in Islam, this is going to make so much sense. And I'm sure they'll go with the message as it comes. As beautiful as this was actually put, put together, I'm wondering, what about, let's back it before Islam and everything, let's back it to Christianity. Should, um... Everyone saw what God did for Moses and his brother and his people and all that, yeah? Should, at, at, the, at the end of the day, do you think the rest of the people that experienced the miracle of Moses should have converted to Christianity? Should that one thing have pushed people to actually believe that, believe that God exists and that Christianity is the way that they were supposed to live at that point in time because um, I have questions because why should the non-believers die because they've chosen not to convert to Islam I always have problems with that one as calm as Islam is be as nice as I admire Islam itself and how together everyone is I feel like they should have just extended an offer of protection which they've done in other situations 
would have reacted to. They should have just extended that protection to these people and shown them that whatever that they chose, maybe Islam was way better. It's I believe in showing someone that something is good than cutting them off completely. So, I, And that's my issue with what was said at the end of this video. Otherwise, um, if you believe something is for you, find a more peaceful way to show someone that um, this is the way. Because what does killing them achieve at the end of the day? You kill them, the people born today, the people born, that will be born tomorrow. And they're going to look at Christianity and say, no, this is not the religion. They're going to look at Islam and say, no, this is not the religion. And they'll come up with their own. This will go on for a lot of years to come. But then what will be gained from fighting about it instead of having us understanding the past it was different having us speak about all these differences to figure out the way in life and sometimes i know it's hard to actually speak to people but i mean we can try are we going to fight for the rest of our lives just to prove that something is the real deal that's something i'd love to know and i'd love to get your opinion on so what's your opinion on this video care to explain it um care to give me a short explanation of what you get from this if there's something you want me to react to, let me know by dropping the link down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.